Oh, look at that. Look at that. That, my friends, is a tater tot hot dish, not a casserole. That is tater tot hot dish. Hello, everyone. I am Andrew Zimmern, proud resident of the great state of Minnesota. Why is that important? Because the hot dish is our state food. We'll talk more about that later. Thank you so much to our sponsors at Shun and Florida Kanya. We love them, uh, without whom this show would not be possible. Uh, today we're making a, <laughs> to call it a family favorite is an understatement. And I know people say, Andrew Zimmern, how many of these things can really be family favorites? They are. And in fact, family argues about what I'm supposed to make for dinner. Um, in the cool weather months, this is a once every two week meal. Um, sometimes I'll make one and just put it in the fridge so that uh, hungry uh, teenage boys uh, can scoop out or reheat the whole thing <laughs> and split it between them. Um, but there is nothing that I enjoy more than uh, a bowl uh, of tater tot hot dish. I had never eaten one when I came to Minnesota, before I came to Minnesota. I'm from New York. We don't have hot dish. I'm just turning on my pan because I'm going to make one uh, with you. Um, I never had a hot dish, and I didn't know there was a difference between a hot dish and a casserole. Um, my recipe is on the website at andrewzimmern.com. I'm going to get this cooking. I love the way I spin that pan. Um, don't worry, your beef and your turkey will take care of themselves uh, as they cook in there. I'm going to add an onion and some salt and pepper and cook that up and put that as a layer. Condensed mushroom soup is a layer. Green beans, sliced or whole or cut or whoever you want, is a layer. Um, some people use peas or broccoli. I find green beans works a lot better uh, flavor-wise and texturally. And then tater tots on top. Now, some people, this is one bag. Some people use two. Not going to lie. Two bags. Abby is sitting there going, yeah, use two. Um, some people eat it with ketchup. Other people don't. Uh, but it is one of those great combinations of food that I think is second to none. Now, while this is starting to cook, I'm going to cut my onions, but I want to tell you a little story. Um, a casserole is a mixture that's all stirred together, covered with something crunchy, potato chips, breadcrumbs, tots, whatever, and baked in the oven. So that's a uh, tuna noodle casserole. We have a great one on our uh, website at andrewzimmer.com for you to check out. Uh, it's called a casserole because everything is stirred together. It's not layered. A hot dish, and this is the difference between a hot dish and a casserole, is that a hot dish is layered, like the one that I'm going to make for you tonight, um, and always has a crispy topping. Um, how did all of this start? Well, hardworking, uh, agricultural laborers in the Midwest, factory workers, um, taconite miners, um, stevedores on the big trading boats in the Great Lakes, um, all worked extremely long hours in all weather, and they needed super sturdy farmhouse fare uh, for lunch and dinner. So what would happen is, you would want to create big trays of food that everyone could scoop out. And that's how casseroles and uh, hot here in the Midwest, they stuck around. And there is a whole. Art to making these things that uh, I think is quite spectacular. So the two that I make the most are the tater tot hot dish and the tuna noodle casserole. However, there is a third one that I make, and I didn't want to make it today because I'm probably making it on a talk show uh, in a couple of weeks, maybe right after the first of the year, and that's wagon wheel hot dish. Wagon wheel hot dish is one of my favorites, just artistically. Uh, you basically uh, make chili. Uh, well, I make my own homemade chili. Um, most people, at least the recipe is get a can or several cans of chili, 
put it into a giant skillet. Uh, something that is uh, 14 inches across is ideal. Um, you fill that skillet with quarts and quarts of chili. You then take bisquick and you make the bisquick and you pour that on the top of the chili. Then you put a half a tomato cut side up in the middle and you use hot dogs across, foot long hot dogs, because uh, you've got two inches in a minute, foot long hot dogs or pieces of hot dogs, however you want to do it, as the spokes in the wheel and you bake it. And it comes out and you sit it down and it looks like a giant uh, wagon wheel. Um, it's absolutely uh, crazy sounding and super, super delicious. Flavor-wise, it's my third favorite, but it's my f one of my favorites to make because the art design on it, you can get really fancy with the spokes on your wheel, right? Some wagon wheels were fancy, some were not. Um, but I digress. Putting my onions in here, they're going to supply some moisture, especially after I salt them, right? I don't need to mince them too fine. Right? I mean, you want to bite into pieces of oven, a piece of onion in here. Sorry, I have oven on my mind. I'm going to pepper this. Some people, when they are making this, don't like to wait for their uh, meat to cook. I find once the thermal momentum gets to a certain point and the, the cold meat kind of gets squashed around and the, the heat in the pan, really starts going, this, this comes together pretty fast. You can put a couple tablespoons of water in there. The problem with that is then you have to wait for the water to evaporate before the meat will start to brown and cook up properly, right? So we're just going to wait for this to keep cooking up. Um, let's open these and get them ready. Questions, comments, concerns from the cheap seats? What do you got? Who's enjoying Thursday night? Lots of people are enjoying Thursday night. I know I am. Um, people are wondering how you get your beard so nice. Oh, I don't. It's kind of wild and crazy. It's, it's like super fluffy and scary. Um, I, I don't know if I told everybody this, but I grew the beard during the, the whole COVID thing. I did a TV show wearing the beard. I then <laughs> did a TV show without the beard uh, because it had to match another season that I shot. Uh, that's for family dinner that uh, is on Discovery Plus and launching linear January 5th. Um, and uh, then the show where I did the beard called back and said, we want, we need to make a couple more episodes um, and we need to do some pickups. So can you grow the beard? And I said, uh, sure, I'll grow the beard. So now I'm growing it and then I'll fly out uh, to Los Angeles in December to do this show and they will shape the beard to be identical. So it's kind of driving me crazy because I want to trim it and there's like this John Quincy Adams shit going on over here. And, but I like, I like this part. I, I'm, I look like several people. Am I an aging uh, Jewish hip hop impresario? Am I rakish rabbinical? I mean, there's a lot of different things that I could be, but thank you for the kind words about the beard. We're getting Santa. Huh? People are saying it looks like Santa. Santa. <laughs> Santa. Hmm. Okay. Santa. I'll take it. Here's the deal with Santa. Um, I, I believe in Santa Claus. And the reason that I do is I would rather live in a world where Santa Claus is real than live in a world where Santa Claus is not real. How's that for a mind blower, right? Yep. All right. What else we got? Was moving to Minnesota from New York a culture shock? Huge culture shock. Ugh, huge culture shock, especially because um, Minnesota um, 30 years ago, uh, well, the Twin Cities 30 years ago were not the Twin Cities that they are today. Today, the Twin Cities what, 18th largest metro, a very sophisticated uh, urban environment. When I arrived here, there was no raw bar anywhere. The restaurant that I opened when I moved here, uh, well, when I got out of the halfway house uh, that I became a partner in, like we put in a raw bar, people were like, what's that? 
what's a clam on a half shell? I mean, it was like, it, it, was, it was crazy. Um, now, we have extremely sophisticated diners and we have a powerhouse nationally recognized dining scene with some of the best restaurants in the country uh, here. So, um, it was much, much different. I did the biggest culture shock for me, and it's still hard, as a New Yorker, like, I don't know who my neighbors are. I mean, in New York, you meet your neighbors when you sue them. I mean, I, you know, here everyone's like, hey, how you doing? And, you know, they invite themselves over for coffee in the morning, and I'm just like, oh, my gosh, this is so brutal. <laughs> and I have nice neighbors. Anyway, yeah, saying good morning to everyone, all the rest of that kind of stuff. I bumped it. I had dinner a couple weeks ago in a restaurant, and a guy, server, came over and said, there's a gentleman in the booth that would like to say hi to you. And I went over to the booth, and he said, I'm your neighbor that lives across the street. And I'm like, oh, hey, hi, how you doing? And he's like, you dissed me yesterday. And I said, what do you mean I dissed you? He said, I was walking my dog, and I waved, and I'm like, I, in my head, I didn't, didn't say it, I, I remember that. And he's like, you know, and you didn't wave back. And I was just, uh, that's the thing here. Like, uh, where I'm from, like, if someone waves at you from the street and you're in a car, you like kind of look at them. So, like, you don't like, hey, how you doing? Um, but that's how we do it here. And it's the person who has to change is me. That's the, that's the lesson. Um, so yeah, I still have a lot of changing and growing up to do. What else we got? Someone wants to know what kind of pan you're using. Oh, you know something? This is, I don't know the brand name. I'd have to look in the bottom and that's kind of hard right now, but I will when I turn it over. I reach for this pan a lot. This is a fairly thin-walled, uh, quick release pan. It has a no stick coating, but it's got these oven proof silicone handles. It's heat proof to 550, so it does go in and out of the oven. I just think it's pretty for TV. It's it's because it's black and red, but more importantly, it's deep. And that's why I chose it. So for something like this, I love using it. I want to show you guys something. See that liquid? Those are juices from the onions and from the meat. And that is something that you either want to cook off or strain away. You don't want all of that water or juice going in there. You can concentrate it by, which is what I like to do, which is cook it down and evaporate it. So I'm just going to keep cooking this down. It's almost, everything is almost cooked all the way through. And by the way, it's going to cook for 40 minutes in the oven, right, to cook the tater tots. Um, so I'm not too worried about it. But right now, it's not going to give any, off any more liquid. And I'm just going to turn this up all the way, all the way, and we're going to let that go. Now, some people say to me, aren't you going to put any other seasonings into it? Um, sometimes I do, but it's, it's meant to be seasoned with onion, salt, and pepper. That's it. So I, if you throw like thyme and diced leeks and, you know, a lot of stuff and, you know, deglaze with the very jaunty 20-year-old, you know, two inches of Beaujolais at the bottom of the, the, the bottle. I mean, you can, it just, then it becomes something fancier. And this is the antithesis of, you know, fancy chef-driven food. This is... Um, just good old tater tot hot dish. Um, so you kind of want that plain meat flavor. I would encourage you the first time to just do it like this. When I was, when I was married uh, and I tried this for the first time, uh, this is my, uh, my mother-in-law's family's recipe. Um, I thought I would surprise everyone after I ate it once by changing everything and I made homemade Condense, I, I mean, I did everything from scratch. Fresh green beans that I cut. I made a homemade potato tot and bound. I did everything from scratch. And everyone ate, took a bite and was like, this isn't tater tot hot dish. And I ate it, and I actually preferred this. Does that make sense? Like, you can't mess around with this too much. Um, another, I don't know, minute or so, and this liquid will be evaporated. You can hear it all sizzling. Don't worry about the rapid uh, cook down to get rid of the moisture. 
right? Don't worry about that. You're not making this meat tough. It's ground meat. <laughs> it's already ground. It's not going to get toughened and you have the fat from the condensed soup and the tots and everything. You're just trying to evaporate that liquid and concentrate those juices into something really flavorful and yummy. The reason I use, you can use, by the way, any kind of ground meat that you like. Traditionally, it's just made with ground beef. Um, but the reason that I do half beef, half ground turkey was just an attempt to kind of make it a little bit healthier. Um, so I'm just gonna put this, see, no liquid. That's fantastic. Into the bottom of my pan. And this is a, This is a Rachel Ray pan, oh. <laughs> which she must have sent me at some point. Okay, now very, very valuable tool to have on hand, and I hope that I have one on hand, I'm sure that I do, is a thin spatula. And I, I love, you know, these little silicone ones that are small because you want all of the cream of mushroom soup out there. Now a little tip. Anyone who bakes, anyone who decorates with icing, right, will already know how to do this. But for those of you that don't ice cupcakes or cakes, what you do is you just put round dollops of the same size up and down your meat here and a thin spatula like this one, right, really, really helps. And once you do that, then you have another one. And you can put dollops of the same size down. Why do you want to put dollops of the same size? Because then when you spackle the whole thing together, I'm just filling in the holes here, you are not going to have, you don't have to go back and forth like crazy. You will have this evenly distributed. Now, if you don't have cream of mushroom soup, can you do this with cream of celery or cream of chicken? Absolutely. Uh, but I like it with cream of mushroom. Um, I have put mushrooms in with the onions, like fresh mushrooms, and cooked them with the meat. Um, but that becomes a whole different animal. What do I do now? Yes, I just season again because I have that soup there. And then I throw my bag of beans. You will notice in a standard sized baking or lasagna pan like this that two pounds of meat with two cans of soup with one bag of beans and one, I think it's a 24 ounce box of tots, bag of tots, um, sort of is perfect. <laughs> um, some people, as I think I mentioned before, did I mention that some people are double tots? Um, if my kid sees just one bag of tots on there, he gets rather upset. There are families where while it's resting, and yeah, I always let it rest for a couple minutes, not as long as we are here. People come and steal them. Uh, so this goes into your oven for about 40, 45 minutes center. And the reason that you want to do that is if you put it too toward, high towards the top, it gets too hot up there, hot air rises. The tots will burn or be ready first before this is cooked all the way through. Um, hold on one second. Let me get a, a bowl. And I think as importantly, oh, ketchup, as importantly, maybe a little Irish Spikes hot sauce. Um, I have gotten, uh, I love hot sauce. Uh, my favorite hot sauce is crystal hot sauce. I use it in everything. Um, there are a couple people out there making hot sauce uh, who I just admire the heck out of. 
This is not an endorsement. I have no relationship with them at all. Uh, but this company, Irish Spikes, which is out of Idaho, I think, is fantastic. They have like 20 different types of hot sauces. Uh, this is their Serrano. Um, it's really good, and I love it with, uh, with something meaty and yummy like this. And what I try to do when I'm portioning this is make sure that you get those tots up at the top. And yeah, I'm not even going to kid myself. I go with that kind of portion. And that's how we serve it. And then let's take a because who am I kidding? I am definitely crushing some of this. I have, I have a busy night. A friend of mine is in town cooking dinner at a restaurant. So I'm going to go eat. I'm going to hop on a plane. I got a lot to do this weekend. But you got to eat your tater tot hot dish. Hot sauce, ketchup, optional, but it's the cream mushroom soup, man. I mean, I love that meat layer, the green beans do their job. Tots are awesome, but boy, undiluted cream of mushroom soup with this stuff is, I don't know. It's the tie that binds. It's the ingredient that has it all uh, make sense. Um, do season. Um, this one is seasoned really nicely. I don't know why. It's one of those dishes that sort of sucks up salt, like mashed potatoes and stuff. You just need a lot with it. Um, not a casserole, a hot dish. Thoughts? Um. What do you feel, how do you feel about adding sweet corn into this? Whole different type of, of hot dish or casserole. There are a lot that have corn in it. The wagon wheel that I uh, talked about before, some people do corn in between the chili and the bisquick as a layer. I've seen it. There are other corn-based ones. You know, try it with corn if that's your thing. I like it with green beans. Um. I am born and raised in Minnesota. I need you to express to other people how fundamental this dish is to Minnesota. Well, first of all, historically, the railroads, the lumber industry, the shipping industry up north, the taconite industry, and we are an ag state, um, wouldn't exist without big inexpensive trays of food that were put down on the tables of families and in cabins where workers were eating historically going back uh, 160 years. So this type of food is foundationally important to our culture. These dishes have stuck around. You know, it's not that families are stingy, right? It's just that they're trying to put together easy, fast, affordable meals on a budget. And in a world where so many people can't afford to eat it all, when I eat a meal like this, it just reminds me how, how important food can be for so many people. And it takes on different shapes. It doesn't have to be tweezer food that I put on my Instagram page. Sorry, I lost you guys. Technical issue. Um, so I think you lost me to Amy Klobuchar, my favorite sitting senator. She and I did a cook-off, two noodle casserole cook-off last year. It's on my website. But ask, if you're not from Minnesota, ask anyone you know from Minnesota to tell you what hot dish meant from them. We all have hot dish and casserole. We, said the kid from New York City. Um, but I feel Minnesotan when I eat this. And I also feel tethered to a food tradition that uh, is 100% heartland and really helped uh, to put farms and highways and, you know, work systems into place all across this great land. And I know that sounds really 
cheesy and patriotic, but it's true. Thoughts? When are you going to make deep dish pizza for us? Mmm! You mean tomato pie with cheese. Um, I should do that. We get a lot of questions for that. Um, I will definitely put that on the list. We'll do that uh, pretty soon. We have a lot of holiday stuff coming up, but definitely first of the year we'll do a, uh, a deep dish pizza. I'll probably do it Detroit style, which I'm quite fond of. Me too. Someone wants to know if you have a fried walleye recipe. It's the most ridiculous question I've ever heard. Do I have a fried wall? First of all, it's our state fish. And a shore lunch rivals a hot dish for our state food. Um, a shore lunch is fried fish, coleslaw, tartar sauce, um, and some potato we think. I usually like to do uh, twice cooked crispy potatoes. We have recipes on our website. Just go and Google walleye. Uh, sorry, put walleye in the search bar on our website. Um, there's no paywall. I, I hope people understand every time I say go to our website, it doesn't cost you anything. Thousands of recipes, lots of cool stuff. Um, but we have a lot of that. And I do a really cool version of it in a new In the Kitchen show uh, that comes out, I think, in January uh, called Wild Game Kitchen, uh, which is really slick, where I cook a lot of wild foods, and I do it outdoors, and I wear a lot of flannel. Would you say that deep dish pizza is tomato casserole? <laughs> yes. It's more tomato casserole than pizza. And don't come at me, Chicago. We've had this conversation before, OK? Most deep dish Chicago-style pizza is not pizza. Some deep dish Chicago-style pizza is a form of pizza, and you all know it's true. Stop, stop getting in on the pizza hustle. Great pizza in Chicago. Great. And several types of deep dish I love. Shout out, Pequods. Love you. Thank you for being you. But yeah, some of it is just tomato pie. Um, someone wants to know, what is a walleye? <laughs> a walleye is our state fish. It's a, it's a freshwater fish. It's a type of pike. It's fantastic. Really, really, really yummy. Delicious. Um, big thank you to our sponsors, uh, the good folks at Florida Kanya and Shun, makers of uh, superb cutlery. Um, Tater Tot Hot Dish, it's on our website. Uh, encourage your friends to check it out. Give this simple, easy dish a try. It is, it is the nirvana of comfort food. I, I can't stop eating this. It is that yummy. Um, I love you all. Be kind to each other. Uh, see you next week where we are going to be live from the kitchen at my house uh, doing all kinds of fun stuff. So maybe I'll show you my hot sauce collection again. I have a whole new set. Everything that's old is new again in the hot sauce collection at uh, the Andrew Zimmern household. Uh, love you all. See you later.